take a few minutes to talk to you about a powerful way for teachers to manage digital assignments through the use of email, and specifically through the use of Gmail. So today we have three goals that we want to accomplish. The first thing we want to do is to discuss how to create labels within a Gmail account. And labels are just another way of talking about folders or a file structure within your email. The second thing we want to do is create some filters, and those are going to automate the process of moving emails into those labels. And finally, we want to talk about some general classroom strategies to use in order to implement this with your students. So first, let's talk about creating labels. Like I said before, a label is another way of thinking about a folder within Gmail. Uh, in order to do this, first you need to log into your Gmail account, and in the top right, you're going to see a little gear wheel icon, like this one here. When you click on that gear wheel, a menu is going to pop up, and you're going to see several different options, and the one you're looking for is the one that says Settings. So go ahead and click on that now. When you click on the Settings icon, you're going to see a new page open up with several different tabs across the top, and the one you're looking for here is the one that says Labels. When you click on that tab, you're going to see some labels that are already generated by the system. These are automatic labels that come with every Gmail account, and you can turn those on or off as you see fit. But what we're interested in is down here at the bottom, we want to create some new labels that are specific to our purposes. So go ahead and click that button. Now what you call your labels are really up to you. Uh, my preference in my classes, I have labels set up uh, for each of the classes that I teach. And so here I've created a label for my 1B physics class. Uh, but These can be anything that you would want them to be. Uh, if you want to get really specific, you can even uh, click the checkbox here and you can have nested labels. So you could have a top level label that goes with a class and then underneath that you could even have labels for specific types of assignments or even students, uh, it's really up to you. Uh, type the name of the label that you want there and then click the Create button. Now once we have all our labels set up, the next thing we want to do is create filters. And a filter really is just a way to automate the process of putting emails into those labels that we've already created. Uh, what we're doing is we're going to create several different filters and we're going to use different search terms to automate, automate the process of organizing the emails that come to your inbox. In order to create a filter, we're going to go back to that settings page, and instead of clicking the labels tab, now we're going to create the filters tab. When the box pops up, the first thing you want to do is type in the term that you want to use for your filter. Uh, and now we'll talk about this a little more in a minute, but the, the term that you want to use here is going to depend on the procedures that you've set up in your class. So here I've created a filter that's going to fill, uh, look in the subject of the email, and it's going to look for emails that have the words physics and 2A in the subject. Now there could be other words in the subject also, but this filter is just going to look for those two particular words. Uh, you can see here that you can filter by any of the fields in the email. You can use the from, the to, uh, you can look for any particular word within the email, you can filter for things that the email doesn't have. There are a variety of different things here, but we're going to focus on subject for now. So I've typed in my filter field, and then I'm going to create filter with this search at the bottom of that box. Now we have some options for what to do once the system has identified an email with those terms. And so you can see here I've highlighted three specific things. There's a lot of different options here, but these three I think are, are probably the most useful for our purposes today. The first one there you see right in the middle it says apply the label. Okay, and this again is the idea we want to use this to automate the organization of emails that come to our inbox. So I'm going to check the box there, and I'm going to automatically apply the label Physics 2A for any email that comes in and has those words within the subject. And you can see some other things that I've highlighted here. The one at the top I think is particularly useful, and this is Skip the Inbox. And what this is going to do is automatically move it out of the inbox, and it's only going to appear within the label. And so that's going to help me keep my inbox clean. If that's not a problem for you, if it doesn't bother you to have lots of emails in your inbox, then don't check that box. You can manually move them into the uh, individual folders when you want to do that later. Uh, at the bottom there, you can see a checkbox that says, Also apply filter to matching conversations. And what this is going to do is, if you already have emails in your inbox, uh, you can have Gmail go ahead and scan those and apply the filters to it. So check the boxes that you want to use in your filter, 
and then click Update Filter. Now, once we've created these filters, we've created our labels, uh, it really comes down to how are we going to use this in our class? How are we going to use this to manage the assignments? And the idea is we have a bunch of different assignments coming to us from our students in email format, and we're using this to automate the process. Uh, in order for this to work, uh, it really requires you to train your students. Okay? You want to set up procedures in your class and then train your students to follow those procedures. And so part of that is going to be deciding on a naming convention that works for you. Uh, and what I mean by naming convention, uh, you can think of it sort of like the header that goes on the top of the page. Uh, a lot of teachers, they have a particular header, and every paper that's turned in, they want all of their students to format it in the same way, with their name, the date, those sorts of things. Uh, what we're doing here is the same kind of idea, but we're talking about what goes in the subject line of your email, because that's what those filters are going to be looking for. So you need to decide on a naming convention that works for you. Maybe you want every email a student sends to you to have the class uh, section in the subject, the student's name, and the name of the assignment. Again, it's totally up to you. It can be whatever you want it to be. Um, the idea, again, is this is just a digital version of a regular classroom procedure. So instead of talking about a header we want our students to write on every paper, now we're talking about the way we want to them to format every email they send to us. For this to work, it's going to require us to be consistent. And what I mean by that is decide on a convention at the beginning of the year, think through it carefully so you know it's going to be useful to you in your classroom, and then use that consistently in your class. Uh, try not to change it too much, uh, because in the end that's just going to confuse your students, it's going to confuse you, and it's going to make this, uh, this tool less effective. And the other thing that is going to make this successful is for you to hold your students accountable in this. Uh, if, if you want your students to do this, if you want, to remem you want them to remember the, the procedure that you've set out, uh, just like with any classroom procedure, it requires you to hold your students accountable. Uh, what I did with my classes this year, the first assignment, I gave them some grace uh, if they didn't do it properly. Uh, and the second assignment, I took off five points. And the third assignment, I took off ten points. Uh, you can tweak that to be uh, appropriate to your class, your grade level, uh, what you're teaching. Uh, but you need to have some mechanism in order to hold your students accountable uh, to make sure that this is implemented properly.